Welcome friends, we are back with R Plus Talks. Today, we are not in our studios. We are in the Arya Vidya Mandir ICAC School at Bandra in Mumbai. And we are talking to the director, Jyoti Kumar. Well, from a primary teacher to a facilitator of the secondary section, from there to a principal, and now a director since the last 10 years of the AVM group of institutions. Tell us about your journey. It's been a wonderful journey. I have no regrets because I started my career as a standard one teacher. And within a span of four years, I moved up to class 10 as their English teacher. You know, and that's, and since then, I have only grown as a person. And more importantly, my uh, principal at that time, Mrs. Pandit, realized the potential in me and offered me the position of a facilitator. And in those days, a facilitator looked after the entire secondary section. So I had almost uh, 30 to 40 teachers in a domain and I managed them. And uh, after that, I became the principal in 1999. And since then, I've moved up. So I've spent almost 21 years as uh, the principal and then as a director uh, in 2008. That's when I became the director. And then I've continued to be uh, in that position till date. So it's been a wonderful journey and I'm no regrets, like I said earlier. Wife, mother, professional. Uh, like a magician you've been juggling. I mean, how do you manage it, especially since you are largely influencing top level decisions at the AVM group of institutions? See, we are able to multitask. So the most important thing is decisiveness. And I think if you're a wife, a mother, you play that leadership role at home as well. So it applies even in schools. So it's absolutely the same way. I don't differentiate my role just because I am a housewife, whether I am a teacher or even as a mother. It's, I think I am and I, I particularly don't lead with the title. So truly inclusive education in all spheres. In all spheres. Wow. Uh, you seem to have achieved Mission Impossible, a melange of the East and the West, you know, a blending Indian values, principles and culture and yet a curriculum with a global outlook. Absolutely. Well, uh, I think, uh, you know, our vision statement is to develop future ready uh, citizens. And, and in this uh, current scenario, we have to be future relevant and we have to prepare our children to be global uh, in their perspective. So that's when we blended both the curriculum with, in, uh, with the internationalism as well as the national board. So we have an amalgamation of all these, uh, I would say the best practices that are being used. So you'll realize that we don't have textbooks from the primary section up to standard uh, six or seven. Let me also share with you, it's not something that we started recently. The no textbook formula was applied way back in 1987 when I joined the school. Wow. So we didn't have textbooks for maths and GK. So it's, and then we continued that trend for science in the middle school as well. So it's not something new, but what I did as a director was I just developed on this policy. Gave vision to the idea. Yes, absolutely. And that's why we continued. And then of course, I'm very fortunate uh, to have like-minded teachers and uh, principals who believed in this philosophy. And of course, uh, with a very uh, broad-minded uh, management who supported this vision. And that's how I was able to take this step. And of course, it is not easy to convince parents, but parents believed in us. And, and I was able to convince uh, the parents because they are used to textbooks, because we studied with a textbook. Exactly. So that's how I was able to create that blend your NTB scenario, as you call it, or your no textbook uh, scenario, is pretty famous around here. We all know about it. Um, of course, 
there is a role that technology will also play as a, a paradigm changer in such a scenario. How do you use technology at AVM? Like, uh, you know, we sort of uh, contribute uh, the learning through Google Classroom. And then we also have an app, school app. So we share the information or knowledge through that. And then we have a very robust uh, interactive and smart board. So we use a technology uh, method and uh, since we don't have textbooks, we do a lot of research oriented uh, classes. So it is what we call the project based learning. And then we have MDL, multidimensional learning, where we link multiple subjects with one concept. Then we also use the COT tools and we also use the De Bono thinking skills. So we don't, we use a multiple uh, learning strategies to disseminate knowledge and learning. So it's not just information, you know, it's all about uh, assuring the students that learning doesn't come only from textbook information. It also uh, applies to outside uh, resources as well. In fact, that's exactly what I was going to talk to you about, that students will uh, take to this like a fish to water, right? But um, how do you bring teachers and parents on board with such a thought process? Yes, of course, it, 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 it's, it's challenging. I, it's not a smooth, I've had a roller coaster ride. It's not something that uh, is very convincing. But I think what uh, we did at AVM was to convince the parents, make them understand what is the importance of being modern of being global and uh, the teachers of course uh, they had no problems because they believed in this ideology that's the most important thing and i think from there the students were able to uh, learn better now you, if you look at our results even if i have to show you the first terminal results the students have been doing very well without the textbooks so the parents also realized that look it's not the textbooks that bring marks. It is the knowledge and the learning that is transferred to the uh, content areas. And that's, and that's been uh, a wonderful situation for us. And I think it has worked well. So eventually when the parents have seen that the proof of the pudding is in eating it. Eating it. They Perfect. realize. They ran, right. And even if I'm, I'm, I have an open door policy here. And uh, I'll always, uh, I always believe that if any parent who wishes to question us on this, they're always welcome to come and see me. Wow. Because ultimately, I am the one who introduced it, isn't it? So I have to take the stops here. Yeah, the buck stops here. Yeah. So Fantastic. I, I um, appreciate that. The ICSC board has been your core area of expertise, of course. Uh, at the same time, the sort of work that you're doing has ensured that you will stay abreast with the syllabi across boards. Across boards, yeah. So, from now, at this stage, a word of advice from you to our parents. Uh, because every parent is today concerned with the one important question. Which is the best board for my child? At one time, this question was almost irrelevant, right? I mean, when you and I schooled, maybe centuries ago <laughs> but uh, the question was almost irrelevant today it is so relevant because every school is offering something new every board is offering something new so what do you think see this is a common question asked by parents you know what does the board offer they offer you a structure and a format and what is important is what do you want a child to accomplish here because what happens here what I've seen as a board it is it's not education that they offer it's just a format exactly. that's it and as an educator I would like to go beyond that boundary let's not only be structured in a format restricted, restricted to that yeah we must break the boundaries and that is the core value of 
our school also so we don't like when we introduce the no textbook we don't have even one day we have no bag day also so children don't bring bags to school they just come to school so our, our teachers take them to you know to the for various excursions they may be going for uh, to the biscuit factory or uh, the bread factory they may go to nehru science center or we would have some talks here so those are the kind of uh, experiences the children uh, should have and i think it has worked well uh, at avm uh, you are correctly saying that it is the school its vision and the execution of the vision absolutely that is of primary importance in choosing yes your education learn institution for the child yeah right fantastic fantastic and um at avm how do you bring parents and teachers to work together you know that triangle the students the parents and teachers to work in sync with each other only then we can shape their personalities when we am talking about an open door policy we practice this i don't have an air conditioner in my room have you seen this? i can feel it you can feel it why is that i want parents to just walk in my teachers will walk in my students just walk into my room okay, so there is the door no barrier is. parents will only approach us if they have a reason if they don't have a reason if they're convinced with the school they don't have to come and uh, come to school and ask x number of questions and i have a very uh, supportive parent body here at avm Wow. So I think that's a culture that AVM builds. That we give that kind of assurance to parents right from play school up to standard ten. So that's the kind of philosophy that we follow, and I'm and I'm sure the parents also believe in that. They they trust the school. If they don't trust the school, they will leave and go somewhere else. And let me also share a parent who leaves the school and goes probably because of relocation. They come back. our ex students come back to the school because they miss the kind of bonding that a teacher student has fantastic you and i i i i can vouch for this you can win trust you can't force it you cannot and i think i am blessed because of that wow yeah okay um one last question jyoti kumar and that is um your advice to school leaders and teachers on how they can be a part of this ever changing dynamic system of education i think even for me i've always been a constant learner i've been a learner throughout my life i even today i am a learner so i think a teacher should be lifelong learners and a teacher does not teach a teacher facilitates learning So in fact I am driving home a point to all educators we should change the nomenclature of a teacher to a facilitator the term facilitator should be used in schools today because ultimately a teacher facilitates learning and that has always been the core point of my discussion at all times a teacher should evolve as a learner and now i would like to share one thing with you from 2:30 onwards till 3:30 the teachers are honing their skills not only in academics but also non academic areas so they have a complete uh you know i would say a plethora i would say a plethora of activities that are shared with the teacher so we have resource persons and coming from outside even from our in house teachers they all come to the school and we train them for for recreational activities but also for academic activities but also hr related activities wow. so from 230 to 330 all the teachers i have about 205 teachers they are all equipped in various uh, fields related to education very good so i mean and this is your daily schedule daily schedule great and we have also an in house uh, program 
wherein when the teachers are busy honing their skills the students are also honing their skills not only in uh, in uh, academics but also in liberal arts artificial intelligence Great. and uh, sports wow so friends teachers countrymen you've heard it here <laughs> right that um, teachers a strong message it's time that we stopped being sages on the stage and we became a guide by the side right yes. thank you very very much it was a pleasure uh, talking to you thank you friends thank you thank you